Today, we're talking about five of the best free pieces of software. Let's get into it. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Adrian Reddix, and today we're talking about five free pieces of software for your upcoming year. The first one. The first one is WPS Office. WPS Office is an office suite. It is a fully fledged office suite. I've done a video about WPS Office. You can check that out right there. And WPS Office has everything you want out of an office suite. It has a writer. It has a presentation PowerPoint. They have a spreadsheet, Excel. They also have a couple other things that Microsoft Office doesn't have, like a PDF viewer and things like that. How it compares to Microsoft Office for most people, like 99% of people, WPS Office does everything you could possibly need that most people do from the ability to write reports, the ability to have uh, spreadsheets as far as if you're a business and you're trying to keep track of your expenses or if you're trying to sort through a big chunk of data, uh, their, pre their spreadsheets, it does all the formulas that most people are going to need. The presentations app is pretty good. And if you go watch that video that I linked up here make sure you watch this one all the way through first and go in the comments you'll see tons of people who say that WPS office helped them write their uh capstone project for college or their thesis or their dissertation and that WPS office is good enough for high level academics to trust with writing their paper. That means it has to have the right uh, uh, style and formatting because those papers are scrutinized very much. So if the margins aren't correct or if the, uh, the font isn't legible, if it's not like a good processor, I'm telling you that these professors will rip it up. I've heard people running businesses off. You'll go to the comments. People say they run their business off of WPS Office. It's a fully mature and featured office set that you can use for free. They do have a paid version, but the paid version uh, lets you access other programs, but the core programs that you get for free for WPS Office are really amazing. And WPS Office works for Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, and iOS. The next one. The next one is an open source program called Krita. Krita is a uh, for graphical design. Let's say if you're a graphic artist or if you work on thumbnails or if you work on whatever design that you can do digitally, you can do on Krita. Now, Krita is open source, so it has a little bit of a learning curve. But if you ever use uh, Affinity Photo or Photoshop, you know, that has a learning curve as well. At the job I work at, we used to have summer interns and one of them was an art major, but he was having some difficulty paying for Photoshop uh, every month. You know, he's a college student. At that time, his tuition wasn't covering an Adobe subscription, so he was trying to do it on his own. So I said, hey, man, that's that's a little much for you right now. Look at Critter. And uh, he had a Wacom tablet and he started to use it. And by the end of the summer, he fell in love with it. So what it does, it takes the expense of Adobe and Photoshop and um, Designer. And Affinity Photo is just a one time. I use Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer and it was a one time fee. But if you have an open source program that gets really, really close to what uh, Affinity Photo and uh, Photoshop could do, it's a win-win. So it's uh, it has a really great community. I'll put some uh, pictures up of people who created things in Krita, and I'll put you know their contact. I'm not stealing anybody's art. So all the artists, well, you should see it go through now that you can create some very beautiful things in Krita. The only limitation is your skill and your imagination when it comes to Krita. And Krita is on Windows, Linux, and Mac. The next one. The next one is a document viewer and it's called Okalor. And what, what do I mean when I say document viewer? Okalor can view a bunch of different types of formats from PDF, EPUB, Deja Vu, DJ Vu. It's uh, a, a standard that a lot of people use for scan documents, like a lot of free libraries online have it in DJ View, or Deja Vu, excuse me. And then you can open up 
uh, pictures like JPEG, PNG, GIF. Yeah, I, I, I say GIF. It's not GIF. It's, it's GIF. TIFF. You get CBR and CBZ. Those are comic book formats because the way comic books are, a regular uh, PDF and EPUB doesn't really do it justice. So that's why you have the comic book format. So what it does is because you can read so many different formats, it eliminates the need for a lot of different programs because some programs you could have as a PDF reader. That's fine, but it doesn't read EPUB or you have an EPUB reader that doesn't read a PDF. Or if you have a, a picture viewer, like it could read JPEG, PNG and TIFF and GIF, but it doesn't read PDF. So you eliminate all this software that's clogging up your computer and so one software can run instead of you having eight different software to view uh all the different things you need to view so it takes a bunch of softwares and put a uh, software so you know software it takes a bunch of software and combine it under one piece of software and that's the beauty of oaklore and it's open source which you know on this channel we love open source. Also, a really good feature of Oaklore is some of the PDF function that you get. Of course, it has a magnifier like a lot of other free PDF or just PDF uh, programs in general. But the two things I like about it is one, the markup feature. So if you're doing a little collaboration and collaboration is important in the modern day work environment, um, you can say you can highlight things and maybe um, like, hey, this needs to be changed or things like that. So you can highlight a bunch of stuff. Or if you're studying a PDF, you can highlight the things that you might want to go back to to learn more. So the highlight feature is fantastic. Another thing I like about it is the ability to create a digital signature. Now, I'm not talking about you doing like a hand signature. I'm talking about a legit digital signature. If you want to learn more about that, I have a video about that. Also, it's just it's a more secure way of making sure that the integrity of the document hasn't been compromised. It's a it's a way of telling people that, hey, this is the person who signed this document. It's really good. Before I go on, uh, if you ever have gotten any use out of any open source projects, uh, especially if you use them for business, I would encourage you that if you have the funds to go and donate to your favorite open source project. It really goes a long way to help the development and servers and storage and things like that. So if you can donate to your favorite open source program and you have the ability to do that, if it's just one, two, three, five dollars, it's not much, but it goes a long way to help out some of these projects, especially especially if you use them for business. Like $5 a year is not much to ask if you're using VLC for business, for business. The next one up is going to be Opera GX browser. So what this is, it's a browser that's tuned or, or made for gamers. The two biggest features I like on Opera GX is the ability to tune your CPU and the ability to tune your RAM. Why is this important? If you know anything about gaming, you know that a lot of games are RAM intensive or CPU intensive. It really depends on how it's programmed, right? So we know that games can use a lot of CPU resources and a lot of RAM resources, right? So what do browsers do also? So browsers are very uh, attuned to use a lot more RAM. It uses a little CPU, but they're very RAM hungry. If you ever go to open up Chrome and then go to the Windows Manager and look at the graphs, you'll see that Chrome uses a lot or a lot of Chromium based uh, browsers use a lot of RAM. Let's say you're streaming and you want to talk to your chat in Discord or and you want to play the game and things like that, your game could possibly suffer and more than likely will suffer because uh, your browser is using so much RAM that uh, your game can't run as effectively as it once could. So the ability to tune your browser CPU and your browser RAM resource can free up more resources from the browser and put it 
in your game. So it makes your gaming experience or whatever else you're doing that's uh, it needs that extra CPU and extra RAM resources better. Also, it has integrations to a lot of different uh, apps that gamers and, and non-gamers use like uh, Discord and Twitch, right? You know, also they have uh, text messaging from WhatsApp, Facebook, uh, uh, WeChat. Everything's right there that you need. You have your Discord, you have your Twitch. Everything is right there. It takes a more gamer centric approach to uh, a browser. It makes gaming a more pleasurable experience. <clears throat> Charlie White, Moist Critical. Uh, he uses it on his uh, Twitch stream all the time, and I'm I'm pretty sure maybe that's going to be one of the reasons. I don't know why he uses Opera GX, but he, he definitely does use it. And the last one, the last one is going to be a program that maybe a lot of you are familiar with. It's going to be Paint.net. Paint.net is a photo editor, but it's so much more than a photo editor. You can do things like uh, graphical design. Um, you can do a lot of touch up, a lot of, a lot of, of very intense graphic based things as far as like design and things like that. Paint.net does a great job of doing that. And paint.net has a huge community. Um, so if you want more paint.net enthusiasts, more tutorials, like the community that supports paint.net is enormous and you can do almost anything with paint.net i have a friend who just did a t-shirt company and he uses either paint.net or procreate to make a lot of his t-shirt designs and um with procreate being a paid piece of software and paint.net being open source and uh, he shows me pictures i can't tell which one he did it with like like there's no big quality difference between the procreate uh, designs and the paint.net designs. I look at both of them and they both look fantastic to me. I can't draw as you clearly have seen with the credit stuff earlier. So if paint.net is trustworthy enough for somebody to base a business on that's based on design, then paint.net has a great wide range of use than, um, than a lot of the paid things out there. Like Photoshop. Photoshop is fantastic. Affinity Photo is fantastic. But if you can do most of the things with an open source piece of software, why not? I still use Affinity Photo, but it's some things in paint.net that I just find that are easier to do. I just think that the power of the software is really its value. Like and and it has such a huge community that if you're a novice, it does have a learning curve. But if you're a novice, there's so many resources out there for Paint.net, paid and free. It becomes a a community, and it becomes a thing that um, you're not going through this journey alone. That yeah, it's open source. Yeah, it has a learning curve, but you're not being out there just thrown to the walls. So what piece of free software do you use on a day-to-day -day basis? Let me know in the comment section. Hey guys, thanks for joining me. If you like videos like this, check out my 2022 list of free software. It's still pretty good software. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one.